Hey, what's happening, guys? Today we're going to start talking about a new subject for us here. Semiconductor theory. So first of all, let's talk about what is a conductor and what is an insulator. Well, conductors are things that conduct current, such as copper, iron, aluminum, uh, copper, iron, aluminum, silver, gold, etc. Insulators, things that do not conduct a current. Glass, plastic, uh, wood to some extent. We'll put a asterisk up there because the moisture content in wood can change things, but you get the idea. Uh, rubber, silicone. Now let's not say silicone because we're going to do something different with silicone. So we have conductors, we have insulators. Conductors conduct current, insulators insulate, they do not conduct. So what does a semiconductor do? Well it kind of conducts. A semiconductor is like trying to get your child to do something it doesn't want to do. If you push it hard enough, it'll do it. But on its own, it won't. So kind of try and keep that in mind as we talk about it. All right, let's go into this a little further. There are lots of different materials that we can use for semiconductor, but we're gonna stick with silicon because it is the most common Okay. Silicon, symbol SI, is atomic number 14. Now, two things that you can keep foremost in your mind when you're talking about atoms and electronics and electricity. All atoms want to be electrically neutral. That means equal number of protons and electrons. So silicon has 14 electrons. It wants to stay that way. That's all. It wants to stay that way. Now, the next thing is they all want to have eight electrons in their outer shell. Doesn't matter what's going on in the inner shells, but they want eight electrons on their outer shells. And they're perfectly happy to share their electrons with their neighbors so that everybody can have eight electrons. So if we draw some very crude atomic diagrams here, and I am by no means a physics expert so if you are and I'm doing something wrong feel free to correct me so I'm drawing in the nucleuses the, where the protons and the neutrons are now each silicon atom has four of its own electrons in its outer shell and it wants to share them. See how this works? And this forms the silicon crystal. It's a beautiful thing. Now, all of these Kilo Echo 8, Golf Bravo, X-Ray. Pardon me. Forgot to turn off the radio. So we have all of our atoms together here. 
and you can see here two 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 see how they all are sharing one of their four outer electrons with their neighbor so that they make everybody have eight that satisfies this need and this need they become electrically neutral and they have eight electrons in their outer shell everything is happy in atom land nothing to worry about here and not a conductor just a piece of silicone so how do we make it into a semiconductor we dope it no not that way but let me show you how all right here is our silicon crystal again this time we have 16 atoms here doesn't really matter they're all happily sharing their electrons and locked what's this who's this who let him in that's not silicon that's arsenic and he has five electrons in his outer shell an extra electron that has nobody to bond with so when we dope our silicon with arsenic we are creating an n-type material and it doesn't take much at all you just throw in a couple atoms of arsenic into the mix and now you have enough free electrons flowing around here that they can conduct a current so you have taken your silicon insulator added a small bit of arsenic and created an n-type semiconductor pretty cool but that's not the only thing we have there's also p-type Okay, here's our silicon lattice once again and this time somebody left the door open and a little bit of gallium got in now gallium only has three electrons in its outer layer so it can't share that fourth electron and what does it create it creates what we call a hole and hole theory is an incredibly weird thing and we're definitely going to talk about it but anyway this hole happily will accept an electron from oh i don't know let's say an n type up here maybe some arsenic that has some extra electrons so we have our p type p stands for positive by the way so now we have our two types of dope silicon we have the n-type which has extra electrons we have the p-type which has not enough electrons what we call holes confusing enough yet don't worry it gets better or worse depending on how you look at it all right this is as far as we're gonna go today because it gives me as much of a headache to talk about it as it probably does for you to listen to it the simplest type of a semiconductor junction material is the diode we've talked about this in the past we have a material we have a substrate that has uh, some n-type doped material on one side remember excess electrons and then we have the p-type on the other side with excess holes and so if we take a battery and we hook it up like this well nothing will happen and, and the reason for that is this area right here called the depletion layer and even though the n-type silicon is a conductor by itself and the p-type silicon is a conductor by itself the negative electrons in the n-type silicon get attracted to the positive terminal of the battery and the positive holes in the p-type silicone get attracted to the negative terminal of the battery and nothing will flow because everything's moving in the wrong direction however 
if we switch it around and put our positive terminal here, well, now we've got something. The free electrons in the end type are repelled by the negative side of the battery. And the holes in the p-type are repelled by the positive side of the battery. The electrons will fill the holes. The free electrons cease to exist. New holes spring up. New electrons take their place. And just like that... Whoop, I drew my arrow the wrong way. Pretend you didn't see that. And just like that... Current flows. Electrons flow. Current flows. Electrons flow this way. Current flows that way. Are you confused enough yet? Whew. I'll explain to you tomorrow how electrons flow one way and current flows the other way. Because this is enough to make your eyes bleed and your ears sweat. And it'll make the hair on the top of your head fall out. Trust me, I'm going bald. I've been doing this for a long time. So, if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.